Hey there fiddlers, George Jackson here. Welcome to our class. This is Essential Bluegrass Fiddle Solos. This is gonna be a bit of a bluegrass fiddle transcription class. Each month, I'm gonna bring you a classic bluegrass fiddle solo and we're gonna break it down together and figure out what about it makes it so great. In my opinion, there's no better way to learn how to plan a style than to dive into what people have done before us and really learn to play it like them. Uh, so this is a great place to start. We're not gonna start with an easy one uh, today, but this is an absolute burner and such a great study. This is Stuart Duncan's solo from the tune Rebecca on Jim Mill's album Bound to Ride. Uh, this is an absolute masterclass in playing in the key of B. I often get uh, fiddlers asking me when they're sort of new to bluegrass, how do you play in the key of B? Because there's a lot of songs that are in the key of B in, in, in the genre of bluegrass. And it's a tough, tough key to get your fingers around, really. Um, my answer is always go learn the solo. There's so much in there that will really inform you and you can take so much out of it. Um, to put into different contexts in the key of B. So, here we go, a masterclass in B, Stuart Duncan's solo from Rebecca, Jim Mill's Bound to Ride. Let's dive right in and I'll uh, give you a little rendition of me playing the solo here for you. Alrighty, let's slow this solo down a little bit. I'm going to put the metronome on so that you can hear a steady beat. Uh, I'm I've got it at 80 BPM and I'll play it for you a little bit slowed down before we break it into little pieces. Um, so this is a good opportunity to kind of like zoom in on some of these really fast moving passages. Uh, right, let's put that metronome on. Okay. So I'm going to play it with the metronome on the downbeat for now. And something that, something that I want you to sort of think about with the intro, it comes after three, one, two, three, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Um, have a listen to where the downbeat is because it's, it comes in in, in a weird spot and we'll talk about that when we break the phrase down. Okay. Here is Rebecca at 80 beats per minute. One, two, three. Okay, before we get into learning it, let's uh, review a couple of things about B major. Uh, how about just playing a B major scale? Um, I'm sure that you all know how to do this, but it's good to just tune in our fingers and figure out where we're gonna be placing them. Uh, starting our B major scale, obviously, on B, on the G string, second finger down, here's our B major scale. <laughs> 
stretches in the key of B. Um, our first position is really stretched out on the low two strings. Um, it's just an awkward position to be trying to improvise in a lot, you know, at least for me. <laughs> um, of course, we have a couple of extra notes uh, below our B. This one here, um, a A sharp and then a G sharp as well if we wanted to. We uh, don't actually end up using those, but it's good to be able to use those lower notes if you, if you want to. So what ends up happening is that oftentimes um, you'll use a combination of first position, but also half position to play in B because we have so many sharp notes, including A sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Um, we can put our first finger on those sharps and have our second finger where our first finger would normally be in first position. So we can try that with our lower notes. So leading up to B, so I have my third finger on B there, and then we continue up. So first finger in half position. Stuart Duncan certainly makes use of switching between first position and half position at times uh, to get certain notes, especially uh, when it goes to the five chord, that F sharp major chord, and we want to have a major sound there, we're gonna have to get some A sharps in, and the best way to do that at, at certain points is to have a half position. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, we've got those two different positions that we're gonna be working out of at various times for the bulk of this. Um, of course, we're gonna incorporate lots of blues notes too, which means that when we have a blues scale, uh, that's our five note blues scale, B, D, open D, E, F sharp, A, open A, B. that all of a sudden opens up most of our open strings. So uh, that's a really useful tool as well. And, and um, Stuart certainly makes use of that. Um, okay, let's dive into learning our, uh, our first little chunk. Before we get started today, can you please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel? It's a small little task, but it will help me a lot. And if you like what you hear, please check out my Patreon page where you can subscribe to tons more videos and other content. That's patreon.com forward slash George Jackson. Right, let's get to it. Just to sort of like put us into context, I'm going to uh, play the notes and then I'm gonna play them in time with the metronome so you can kind of hear, because this, this was a little confusing. It was a little confusing for me uh, to figure out exactly where to place uh, the downbeat at first. Um, the very first phrase here goes like this. Okay, so we're sliding into that F sharp on the D string. Okay, let's turn on the metronome and put it into context. Okay, so we're gonna have basically a four beat count in before the down beat. And three of those beats we're going to count out. So it's one, two, three, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba. One, two, three. And we have a bit of an anticipation on that F sharp note. So it's one, two, three. Now, if we just go from beat one, it's going to be starting on our D sharp note. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So keeping that in mind, the first beat comes on our D sharp. So 
So we're kind of delaying the introduction of that melody note, which is F sharp on the E string. That's our melody really, but we're going. That's our intro, sort of a gesture at the melody. Okay, so we've got that first phrase. One, two, three. how it's going to go from there. So one, two, three. Now that little flourish there, three, two, one, can be a little bit bluesy. So something that we're going to be sort of exploring a little bit during this solo is we're not going to be playing everything just in B major, you know. Um, we have those bluesy notes. So we're actually going to sort of push that from D, sort of north of D a little bit, but not quite all the way to D sharp. It's going to be... And then we're landing on our G sharp there. Okay. Okay, we're going right up to our fourth finger, B. Lots of bluesy third fingers on that A string again as we go down. Bluesy. Okay, that's our second phrase. Let's put those two phrases together. So one, two, three. some longer notes in there isn't there so make sure you're sort of counting them out with me or as I'm playing them count them out or go back and have a listen to the metronome version um, to see how long those notes are held out for one two three B right at the top there is kind of anticipated, isn't it? Okay, from there, we're going to do a little bit of um, a sort of bluesy, a, a bluesy little figure. So we've gone to the, the chord of F sharp here. All right, the five chord as we'd call it. And instead of hitting that A sharp, we're going to be using a little bit of a bluesy sort of just a very quick passing note. This happens so fast, you don't even notice it, really. When you just play that open A, it maybe sounds a little bit weird in context when we're kind of very clearly in this. But we're not lingering on that note, that's the difference. So we have two... One, open, and then we're double stopping with our second finger and the open E string. Okay, then we're stretching out for that A sharp with our fourth finger this time. Open. Stretching out. And we're bringing it down. So we're starting at A sharp bringing it down to a sort of A. You can double stop that with our second finger on the C sharp there. All right. Okay, and then our phrase after that, which is going to an E chord. Now this is something that's gonna happen quite a lot too. And something that's um, good to get our fingers around is kind of like playing around with these arpeggios, right? Like. We have our E major arpeggio, and here Stuart is going to go. And that gives him a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff to work with. It's kind of awkward playing stuff in E major, right? That's more scalar. 
but with those three notes and just repeating them around, um, we've got a really nice little phrase there that really spells out the chord that we're in. Um, so I think this is a great thing to practice. Uh, especially in awkward keys. Okay, we've got our E arpeggio, so. So E, G sharp, B, E, G sharp, B, G sharp, B. And then we're resolving to the B chord, so we have another bluesy little moment here. Sort of hitting that D natural and finishing with our double stop, our B double stop, which is F sharp on the D and B on the A string. Okay, that's kind of the first half of the A part. So we have one, two, three. As we finish that, you can give that a little, um, little sort of ornamented G sharp pull off there to finish it. All right, that's that's the first uh, the first A part. Now our second A part comes after that, and it's going to go like this. It's going to start off like this. That's going to be the first half of it. Um, as we do our little intro lick this time, it's going to be more on point with the uh, um, with the rhythm. So we count just after the one, one, and then our downbeat is going to be on the F sharp this time. So where the melody is, one. So we have that little intro line. This is more aligned with the melody here. So one, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, T sharp, D. I'll stop saying note names, too many sharps. Okay, downbeat on the F sharp. So again, we have this little arpeggiated thing, um, but this time in B. So we're going in B sending, F, uh, F sharp, D sharp, B. All right, we do that twice. And then we have this little melody. Little chromatic run up to the G sharp. figure here and then I love this little thing here and he does it quite a lot um, coming up uh, towards the end of the solo as well we have sort of a slide a bluesy slide up to the D sharp F sharp E then we're sliding back Beautifully kind of giving a nice slide back into half position to that A sharp. So Oh, we love that. <laughs> okay, let's have a listen from the top of the second A part. So it's gonna be after one. One. So if we 
take it from the last little part that we learned. Okay, so as we've uh, just finished on that A sharp for the chord F sharp major, we're going to sort of continue on with that little F sharp major. So this is the rest of our F sharp major um, section. Droning the E string, we slide back up into first position with our second finger. And then we're going to stretch out that extended fourth position, uh, fourth finger again, sorry, uh, in first position to that A sharp. So. So if we go a little bit further back again. Okay, and here we're gonna use our open D string again. Uh, because it's bluesy and it's allowed and it's very quick so so this little phrase here it's going to start on open D string okay then we have these little triplets we're going to do so we have D natural D down to B, and then we have G sharp, F sharp, back to B. Then we're going to slide into that B chord. Um, to finish. Such a good bluegrass moment there. There's one thing that you take away from this solo. Um, doing that in any is just the most bluegrass thing ever. So uh, we're sort of sliding into that D sharp with our F sharp um, at first finger on the E string droning. And we're finishing on our first finger. That takes us to the end of the A part. All right, let's play up to there and then we'll get into the B part. One, two, three. good stuff in there so much good stuff already uh, and we still have half the solo to go um, so let's get into the B part uh, the first part of the B part solo gonna go like this all right this is a really cool rhythmic little thing it's a very Stuart Duncan type thing to do we're gonna start the B part starts on a five chord so an F sharp major we're going to slide into that straight up, giving it that sort of F sharp major 7 vibe with the open E string. So it's kind of rhythmic, so we're going... This is kind of like, um, like a little bit of a sort of shuffle bow sound, where we're going... separate bows but we're doing sort of like like um, and then emphasizing that third beat one two three four one two three so so just for that little moment it sort of gives us that little shuffly uh, rhythmic phrase which I think is really cool so 
One, two, three. Okay, the, the other part of that that's going on is this kind of bluesy thing here. We're going open A to A sharp. So we're kind of back in, in uh, half position here. So we've got that. Um, you, can, you could really maybe deem this kind of first position but with an extended back finger. So um, we're doing, uh, you know, like we've got our minor third and our major third together. It's kind of a cool sound, right? I like that sound. So that's something that I, I, I take. Um, you know, or that, that you might want to take and go, mm, how am I, how can I put like that minor major third sound into another context? Uh, this, these are the things I like to take. But anyway. All right. Uh, then we're going to go. So we're sort of going unison E here. Ah. So. Then we're going a little shuffle kind of figure here. So we have. here the, the chord is B and we're really emphasizing that in super B major okay okay now this little lick here is epic this is one of the the trickiest little things um, and it's so Stuart Duncan just his ability to be so technical uh, in such a tough little um, and quick solo. Um, there's a little phrase here. Oh, so cool. Yeah, that took me ages to figure out when I first... Um, position. Alright, that little bluesy thing again with the back to first position. And we've got that little chromatic move backwards from F sharp to F and then to E. So cool. Um, okay, then we're going into something that we did before um, in the A part. So we're doing a little bit of a um, sort of arpeggiated figure on the E. We just do that twice and then with that little bluesy thing again. Finishing on Second finger on the A and open E. Okay, let's let's uh, let's revisit the second half of the B part so far. Much 
good stuff in there. And even if uh, the exercise is just playing this a bunch of times, there is just so much good content in here for playing in Bs. You know, I feel like most of the stuff that I play when I play in B kind of comes from at some point in this solo. Okay. Um, okay, now this part here, totally epic famous lick. Ah. So cool. This is our kind of like turn around back to the A phrase. Um, at the end of the B part, it sort of revisits the A melody. Okay, so we're gonna slide up to third position here. So the note that we're aiming for with our third finger is F sharp, which is the same as where our first finger is. So I always check, okay, there's an F sharp. That's the note we're going for up the A string. First finger is gonna be on the note A, so we have a flattened seventh in the key of B. So we've got that third finger going to the A. Then we're going to take our fourth finger and we're going to sort of slide that from G sort of up to just sort of creates this cool sliding up to the A, that bluesy A note. Okay, and then we're doing... So this is just such a bluesy moment. We have um, B, A, B, A, and then we have this sort of fourth finger slide it's hitting from D, sort of sliding up towards D sharp. And then back to A, um, B, second finger. And Stuart really gives this a shake, you know, he gives this a really sort of ornamental vibrato. And slides off it. So cool. Okay, this next little phrase. Oh my gosh, so much good bluegrass content in there. Really bluesy. So we've got our A natural. Sliding that F sharp, our first finger back to an F and then an E. And then the second half there more bluesiness with our D to sort of D sharp and then finishing on the open A so all right then our ending here is going to be a bit of a sort of shuffle uh, figure Include that open E, which is the seven, right? Just try that little. We're sliding into the C sharp and then heading to the open E. changes to an E and we're going to hit the D note then which is the seven of E right we're going to go so just that our other note is a G sharp so the third of E and then we're going to hit so we have this little And then we're going to 
slide back up, this time to the D sharp. Descending phrase at the end, F sharp. And then we're going to grab our A string with uh, our second finger as well. We're going to do sort of like F and C together to E and B together. Open D, super bluesy, finishing on our B, low B. Okay, it's quite confusing all of this. thing is to do is just kind of play it along a bunch of times. Uh, let's have a look at our full uh, second B part. So um, actually uh, <laughs> our full B part from the B part. We'll go from the B part because it, it kind of is just one B part and then a reprise of the A. That's our B part. So one. <laughs> to you in broken little phrases now and maybe what you can do is uh, just pause the video after each phrase and make sure that you got have it exactly as I'm playing it or as close as possible and then I'm going to play it at a nice slow tempo for you to finish off um, but hey there's just so much content in here I, I could probably spend an entire year making videos just on each of these little uh, licks and what they're good for but I, what I want you to do is just find cool parts check out the chords check out the uh, recording and find all the cool parts and figure out why it works in that space um, I've tried to explain some of the ones that I think put them into different contexts but also bring them into your other tunes or your other songs in B when you are uh, soloing in B okay let's break down the whole solo into little chunks one, two, three. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, that's our first chunk. Here's our second chunk. This is chunk five. Chunk six. 
and seven. Chunk eight. Chunk nine. completely evenly divided chunks but um, hopefully uh, you can kind of pause the video and slow it down and make sure that you have all of those parts. I'm going to play it one more time all the way through here at an even slower tempo than what I did at the beginning and hopefully you can play this along with me. I've written this all out in music notation and that is available on Patreon so if you want to check that out head to my Patreon page patreon.com forward slash George Jackson um, Hopefully that'll help you just dig into all of these details and um, if you need to consult uh, the timing or a tricky passage, you can do that in, with the music notation um, or remind yourself how it goes. Uh, but I do encourage you to sort of push through with the ear learning. That's the ear learning, E-A-R. Um, I know it sounds confusing with my accent, but uh, the ear learning I think is the key to being a fiddle player as well. So um, the more that we can remember and, and channel our fiddle playing through ear learning, uh, that's gonna be for the best. Okay, we have 60 beats per minute. And I'm gonna play it this time with the beat on the off beat. So we're kind of imagining that this is like a mandolin chop. One and two and three and four. And one, two, three. you enjoyed learning this solo with me and I hope you'll join us for more transcriptions every month it's gonna be a lot of fun and we're gonna learn so much stuff um, if you haven't checked out my patreon page please do it's patreon.com forward slash George Jackson uh, there's so many lessons up there and this is where I'll be continuing to um, post the the, ser the lessons in this series as well as uh, a bunch of other series as well that happens. Uh, there's a bunch of different tiers, but you'll find these lessons at the $20 tier. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Really appreciate that. And we will see you next time.